Hi everybody, Brian Balrick with Roland DGA in Irvine, California. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, image resolution and vector data and the difference between the two and how it uh, relates to image quality. So let's see, looking at a Windows station here, let's go ahead and open up an internet browser. I actually wanted to start with um, first off discussing where the, uh, the images originate. So a lot of the times you'll have clients that will provide you data and uh, that's fine. Sometimes you'll be asked to obtain the data for them. And I just want to show you a quick trip uh, trick to uh, locate. Sometimes you can get what you need off the internet, but there's you know, some cautions. You know, first off, there's uh, usage rights that you need to be concerned with. And the second of which is um, the resolution and what format is it in and how usable will it be. But I wanted to show you briefly a quick couple tips to do all this. So I happen to be using Bing today. I'm just going to click on the image browser in the upper left. And just I already did a search here on bicycle. So very simply, we're just looking for an image of a bicycle. And the reason I'm using Bing really is just because of this one little aspect. If you notice, as I hover over these uh, thumbnails, it actually is indicating uh, in the image, in the white text, the actual pixel density or the resolution of each of these images. And that's very handy. Um, it gets to be really troublesome when you start seeing all these images that you think are just great. Let's use them and we can blow them up to whatever size we need. And most of the time you can't. They're thumbnails. They're usually very small amounts of data represented on your screen. And you think that you're going to get what you need, but most of the time you don't. So this one's 1200 by 900. Here's one that's 1000 by 1000, 1500, 400, you know, what is this? 546. Or no, that's 5,000, forgive me. So that's rather a large image. So I ended up going with this one here. So it's uh, 1199 by 800, which is a JPEG, right? So I click on it. There's the image. And I'm just going to click right click and then save picture as. And I already saved it to my desktop, so I don't already have to do that. So there's one. But interestingly enough, that may not be enough data. So a nice little side trick is if I put the words high resolution bicycle return so here's a lot more imagery there's some motorcycles but sure enough when we look at uh, let's say this particular one here it's 6,000 by 6,000 or 6,000 by 4,000 JPEG right so I'll click on that one and do a save as I just want to show you the difference between these two right so I've already saved those both to my desktop. So there's your trick. You know, you can find data on the internet. Again, be careful. You always have to know the usage rights. Are you legally allowed to use the image on something? Uh, you'll have to do your own research, but for sake of purpose of demonstration. So let's go ahead and just take a look at these. So this was that first image I, I pulled down. And let's say that this was provided to you by uh, a client. They just said, you know, here's, here's the image I do have. Uh, work with this, please. Um, maybe the job was to blow this up into a beautiful banner for their bike store. So let's take a look and see what we can do with it. So easy enough. I'm just going to go up to image size and mm, not great news. So in its original size that it currently is, that's 1199 pixels by 800 pixels at 72 DPI. So we're looking at really not much more than 16 by 11 uh, inches. So we're not going to be able to grow this very big. Uh, definitely not to the poster size that they were hoping. We can interpolate and I, I won't go into the details of that, but we can basically say we want to create new data from what we have and grow it and try to do it the best we can. If you choose to do that, you can. I warn you that uh, if you look around this image already, without even blowing it up, the text along the down tube here where it says flying pigeon, I can barely make that out because it's already fuzzy. That's just going to get worse. So again, in raster world, raster is nothing more than a collection of pixels of color. That's it. There's no vector data. There's no hard lines. There's no uh, defined start and end point to anything. It's literally a canvas with a bunch of dots of color. 
that is raster only trick with raster is if I if I attempt to grow a raster image it'll have to interpolate interpolation is literally sampling looking at all of the pixels of color and creating new pixels of color in an attempt to grow the amount of data the problem with that is it loses accuracy you lose a definition so I'll show you it will go ahead and grow this real big we'll go up to 80 inches wide by 53 and I there you go so right away you can see what was smooth edges start to lose their edge uh, visible text starts to lose its legibility um, yeah so again you got to be careful so I'm going to cancel out of that let's take a look at that second image that we pulled down that was high resolution so let's go up to image size and right away you know we're clear we're crystal clear I'm I'm very good as far as the zoom ratio that we've got right here we're very tight on a couple of letters perfectly legible and the main reason is if we look over at the side here the image total once it was opened up became 69 megs okay it's 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels and the beautiful part it's already 20 inches by 13 at a resolution of 300 okay so now I'm going to show you let's say that this gentleman wanted the job produced at um, 70 inches wide so let's go ahead and turn off resampling because we don't want to interpolate we don't want to create data from old data and try to and, and remember what happens it's going to go all fuzzy everything that's clean and sharp is going to get lost but now that I've turned resampling off it's just going to take the original data and grow it because we have data to play with we have enough resolution to actually stretch so let's go ahead and take what was a 20 let's take it up to 70. notice at this point we're at 70 by 46 at a resolution of 85 still completely usable and if you notice those letters they're still very legible we're not getting a ton of aliasing which is that stair step effect that you get when you interpolate um, again aliasing it's this it's where what was a smooth line could be represented because there's enough data but then when the data breaks down you start to actually see stepping so totally doable congratulations this is an image that you can grow to the client's desired size whereas the other one there simply wasn't enough data again let's compare the total dimensions again just so you see what I'm speaking of again this one as it was opened is only 2.7 megs of data 16 by 11 at a paltry 72 dpi there's just not much density of pixel data in this image to grow go back to the other one do the same thing image size 20 by 13 at 300 dpi and the opening size of 69 megs so all of this good detail that we see here is helpful to you to know what you can achieve with this imagery um, very important if a client sent you know if they came in with this image and you open it real quick and say I'm afraid can't do this large poster from the image you brought me could you please either you, you lay it back onto the client you ask them uh, very kindly to see if in their library do you have a larger image we can use do you have an original that we can scan in-house and, and get the right amount of data for the image that you want uh, contact the maker of the of the of the item in this case a bicycle and see if they have any stock photography image data that they have that's high resolution lots of capture data high uh, high data size all these things very helpful and usually doable so I'm going to minimize this real quick because I want to show you without even using Photoshop these are the two files right here on my desktop that we pulled down that first one let's just do a right click properties and let's go to details right away you don't have to have Photoshop to get the details on these again I'm just going to hit properties on that second uh, job and run over here to the details tab and let's move this down and we'll compare the two so there you have it both of the details for both images on the screen didn't need Photoshop and right away real quick thumbnail of what's happening with this data and how how much data you've got to use so nice quick uh, easy way to do a quick check and you can see the breakdown right here it's clear as day uh, pixel density is there 
uh, resolution, how many DPI you've got, and yeah, you've got it all. So there's that information about raster data and, and things to be careful about and how to proceed. On the flip end of the spectrum, so we just spoke about raster. Uh, again, the canvas with a bunch of pixels of color. That's all it is, right? Different world that we're going to talk about now, which is vector. So I've happened to bring in a logo design um, into Illustrator. Uh, it's comprised of several shapes, just a large triangular shape. But right away when I notice on the screen, I'm able to click on an object and see the bounding area and see these anchors that we can use to stretch or grow and, and play with. That's what this is. Vector data exists as definitions of start and end points with either a curve or a straight line um, and filled with a specific color. Beautiful part about vector data. It is infinitely scalable. scalable. So go ahead. I've just windowed in on this uh, Roland logo here and I'm going to click the uh, bottom left anchor and just start dragging. I'm going to take it up to about double its size. And guess what? No breakdown of data. The lines are still nice and smooth. I can continue to do this infinitely and grow this to whatever size the client would desire. That's the magic of vector data. It is, again, just definitions of line segments or curves. Uh, therefore, when you grow them, the calculation of the line changes. That's all you're changing is where the start and end points move to and then calculating how that curve would look at that size and it just becomes that size and it's still clean and usable and uh, yeah so vector data has its advantages for sure um, you won't I won't have to ask the client for another version of the logo at all it's vector it's no problem I can grow this to the size of his wall and it will hold together so hopefully this has been helpful a uh, little clarification of the types of data that you receive and what you might be able to do to check and uh, basically prevent any kind of misunderstanding about what you can do with the data that you've been provided and in some cases what you can do to move past it and have the client work with you on getting better data uh, to work with. Hope this has been helpful and look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you.